Hello and welcome to EDUC 7721 Characteristics of Gifted Students. This recorded presentation will serve as an orientation both to the course and to our online learning environment. My name is Dr. Isabel Crowder and while I may not get to meet any of you personally this semester, I do anticipate that we will have the opportunity to get to know one another through our online course environment. Um, to begin with, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself, share some details with you. I earned a Master's in Education in Special Education and a PhD in Educational Psychology with an emphasis on gifted and creative education at the University of Georgia. And gifted and creative ed really is my passion. So I'm so excited about Piedmont's gifted endorsement program and the opportunity to work with each of you this semester. Um, I currently serve as an assistant professor in the Early Childhood Education Department at Piedmont, where I work with both undergraduate and graduate students, and um, also lead parent and teacher workshops on topics related to everything from infusing creativity and critical thinking in the classroom to specific strategies for differentiating for gifted students. My specific research interests include gifted programming and instruction, creativity, and then the program evaluation, evaluation of the effectiveness of gifted programs. Before I joined the faculty at Piedmont, I spent eight years teaching both special education and gifted ed in Athens. Um, and during that time, I also had ample experience working in the general education setting as I collaborated with classroom teachers to provide services for both gifted and special education students. I originally came to Athens from Washington, D.C., again, to pursue my master's degree at the University of Georgia. Um, and I had not intended to stay, but I've really fallen in love with the South and specifically with Athens and now call it home. Uh, my husband and I have three children, two boys, a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old, and then a daughter who will turn three shortly. And um, we live on a small, a small farm about 20 minutes outside of town. So that's just a little bit about me. And again, I look forward to getting to know each of you as we proceed with our course. To begin with, I'm going to talk about some general course expectations. It is a little bit different participating in an online class uh, for those of you who may not have had this experience before. So I want to go ahead and um, be clear about some things before we proceed. First, it is expected that you check Moodle, specifically our Moodle classroom, and your P Piedmont email at least every 48 hours. I will often post new announcements to our Moodle page. And we can send email through Moodle, but that email is delivered to your Piedmont account. So that is the primary way that I will communicate with you. Um, and it's really critical that you do indeed check in frequently to make sure that you're keeping up to date with the class. Second, it's expected that you'll complete assigned readings in advance of weekly discussions. Each week on Monday, I will reveal the module for the week, which will include detailed directions about how we're going to proceed. Um, the module will have a discussion forum where you'll respond to a discussion board prompt each week. Those are typically going to be due on Thursday. And then you'll also be expected to respond to two of your peers. In order to complete the discussion forum prompt response, it really is critical that you have indeed read all of the assigned readings so that you can participate actively in conversation. Completion of the readings is also going to be critical um, as you complete your assignments for this course. Um, again, actively participating in weekly discussion board activities. I, I emphasize active participation in that in the absence of a live classroom, our online discussion forum really is the opportunity for us to demonstrate application of what we're learning, to raise questions, to make connections with the classroom um, in a meaningful fashion. 
I'll upload specific details about what active participation looks like, if you will, in an online discussion board. But just very briefly, when you have a prompt simply saying, I agree, or um, that's a good idea, is not active participation. So a thoughtful response does not need to be long, but it does need to draw from course readings, support your thinking with relevant ideas, um, and again, just generally demonstrate evidence of, of thoughtfulness. At one point in the summer in the semester, you will also be expected to work with others in the class on a group project. You'll be facilitating discussion at one point, and there are detailed directions on this assignment available in Moodle. But it will be important with you to communicate via email. You can arrange to phone one another however you choose to proceed, but it is a group assignment and you'll be responsible for communicating with your group members as you all plan and progress with this particular assignment. It's also expected that you submit assignments by the posted due dates. In our Moodle section, there will be links each week whenever assignment is due where you can upload your assignment in Word form to a Moodle, it's almost like a drop box, if you will. But the week that an assignment is due, again, assignment is due, you will have this link revealed in the module for the week where you can submit your assignment in Moodle. There will be detailed directions for all assignments also included in our Moodle page. And when you use the submission, um, submission app to turn in your papers, you will also be able to see the grading rubric that I'll use to evaluate each of your assignments. But all of this will be carried out in Moodle. Again, it's going to be very important that you do have frequent, regular access to the internet to make sure that you are indeed able to submit all assignments by posted due dates. And last but not least, it is expected that if you run into technical problems, if you've got questions, that you contact Moodle administration for technical support. I'll share the uh, email address for that on the next slide and I also have information about getting in touch with Moodle um, available on our Moodle site. I can answer course questions and I can answer some basic Moodle questions but it really be really will be up to you to again be active about working with Piedmont's Moodle administration as you do if and when you rather encounter technical problems. There's a little bit of a learning curve for those of you who are new to Moodle and for those of you who have used Moodle with Piedmont in the past we are using an updated version so it's slightly different but there are ample resources to help support you as you proceed. <clears throat> So, what if you need help? Because we're not meeting weekly and we're not having that opportunity for active dialogue for you to raise questions in class, I want to take a little bit of time in advance to talk about some of the steps that you can take or the actions that you can take if and when you are in a situation where you feel like you need help. First, there may come a time where you need help with an assignment. Either you need clarification about expectations, you're unsure what to do when something is due. And first and foremost, before you contact me for help, I ask that you carefully review the syllabus. I've taken great lengths to provide fairly clear information about things like grading expectations, due dates, um, relevant resources like websites and so forth and sometimes answers to student questions can be found just with taking a few moments to go back in and checking with this checking with the syllabus to see if you cannot find the answer to your question included in the syllabus each week I will also post very specific directions about how we'll be proceeding due dates for the weekly discussion board activities 
um, again, links for submitting assignments and so forth. So if you've got a question, I ask again that you carefully check and see if the answer is not provided somewhere in the directions for the week. So instead of immediately contacting me, taking a moment and checking back through those directions. When it comes to questions <clears throat> about assignments, I've also created fairly detailed directions for each assignment which will be available under course resources on our Moodle page. And so first and foremost, you've checked the syllabus, you've still got questions about an assignment, take a look at those detailed directions on our Moodle site and see if that can't be helpful for clarifying any confusion you may have. When it comes to uh, technical support, you can also refer to the Moodle Facts Frequently Asked Questions link on our course under, uh, under course resources on our web page. And then, of course, you can email me with questions about the course. My email address is provided here and then multiple places on our website. Or you can email the Moodle administration at moodle at piedmont.edu. And they're really good about getting back in touch with students pretty frequently, um, ideally within 24 hours. I check my email daily during the week. You can expect to get a response from me within 24 hours on the weekend. Um, it may be that it's within 48 hours. And I generally check my email for the last time each day around 5 o'clock. So last but not least, the fun part, if you will, what are you going to learn this summer? First, we're going to begin to unpack gifted and talented. What does it mean to be gifted and talented? Who are we talking about? What types of behaviors distinguish a student who is gifted and talented? And what you'll see very soon is that there are actually multiple definitions of gifted and talented. There's not necessarily a single agreed upon definition. We're going to be taking a look at some of the historical events, educational trends, and research, research that have shaped the field of gifted education. How have we come to be where we are today in regards to how we think about gifted and talented students and how we serve gifted and talented students? What are some of the pressing needs of gifted and talented students? These are the types of things that we'll be investigating. Next, we're going to take a really close look at the characteristics of gifted students. These include the cognitive characteristics, the social and emotional characteristics, um, positive characteristics, and negative characteristics, and how these characteristics vary from groups of students. We'll take a look at what we refer to as some of the special populations of gifted students. While we tend to talk about gifted students as a homogeneous group, in fact, this is a very diverse population of students with notable differences within the population. So we'll look at some of those differences. We'll be looking at the current trends and issues affecting gifted education. Things like how does the school reform movement and the increased teacher accountability and testing affect gifted education, push to inclusion, and so forth. Then we'll take a look very specifically at Georgia's policies and laws pertaining to gifted education. This is where we'll really investigate um, your responsibilities and, and what you can expect to find um, in regards to gifted education in your schools. And ultimately what I really want to have each of you walk away with is an understanding of why should we care about education of gifted students in the first place. Why does it matter? Why are we investing time and energy to the study of gifted students? Why does it matter for students, for families, and, and for our country as a whole? Um, I look forward to working with you throughout the semester. I'm so excited again to have you join us in this first course of Piedmont's required three courses towards the gifted endorsement. Um, and please do know that I am here to support each of you in our online environment as we proceed.